Good, Good morning. morning. A very warm welcome to St George's Cathedral on this fresh, what we call a summer's day in England. But it's a bit cooler, I know, um, for us Perth folk now. It's lovely to have you here, whether you're online or you're in person in the cathedral. We carry on. There is cake. I have it confirmed. Uh, we carry on next door with cake and savoury scrolls, tea and coffee after this service. Uh, so please make your way, follow the crowd out one of the doors and head in that general direction. It's great to have, uh, great to have you here this morning. We'll fare well during morning tea, the Reverend Dr Raywin Whiteley, who presides the last time here this morning for us. It'll be great to say uh, goodbye together. Um, her card, her farewell card, if you've not signed it, is at the back, so please make an extra special effort to sign that card. We have quite a busy day, so brace yourselves. At 11.40, we're going to have a quick meeting for the pilgrims in the corner of the Upper Burt Hall. So please make your way, uh, if you're going on pilgrimage to Turkey, Greece and Italy, please hang around after we've farewelled Raywin. But at 12 o'clock, we have servers training back in the cathedral. So please make your way back in here, if that's your, uh, your thing as well. Uh, at 2 o'clock, Caleb and Steph will be married to members of our own congregation at the High Altar. So if you wish to hang around and pray for them, then that's another thing you can do. Uh, and if you'd like to come tonight, uh, the Archbishop of Perth, the Most Reverend Kay Goldsworthy, will receive the Doctor of Divinity from the University of Divinity this evening here at the University of Divinity graduation. It's the highest honour that can be awarded by any university. And so it's a, an evening of great joy and celebration and we'll have a party afterwards. There's so much Australian sparkling wine in the Upper Burt Fridge uh, we'll need a big crowd to get through it, so please do try and come to the uh, Evensong at five, which includes uh, the University of Divinity graduation. I've not finished yet. Next Sunday, the 21st of April, we will celebrate our patronal festival, St George. Um, the Right Reverend David Bassett, one of our new assistant bishops, will be preaching, and then we'll gather for the big cathedral lunch. Now, I think we've had four of these now, so you know the form. There is a sign-up sheet at the back uh, for those who are able to bring a dish, whether that be sweet or savoury. Um, that would be really helpful. Tina's not here to nag you, so she's asked me to nag you. Now, unaccustomed as I am to nagging you, it would be really good if you could sign up at the back uh, to bring a, bring a dish, if, you're, if you can. Otherwise, you just come. You come and eat, bring a bottle of something to drink and share, um, and we have a good party in the hall next door next week after the 10 o'clock service. Um, there's lots of other news in our pew sheet. There's a great concert coming up um, on the 30th of May. It will sell out. Dr. Nolan will play organ. We have a world-renowned trumpeteer, tr trumpeter, trumpeteer, trumpeteer? We'll go with that. A trumpeteer coming, and it will sell out. It's in the cathedral, it will sell out. So please, we'd hate you to miss out. I think that's it for now. A grown-up normally tells me I've forgotten something. They're not telling me. So, may the Lord be with you.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Nala Kadich Nunga Mort Ken Kadak Nijabuja. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been offered for us. Therefore, we come to celebrate the festival. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith with a sincere and a true heart. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear and help help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Lord of life, by submitting to death you conquered the grave. By being lift up, lifted up on the cross you draw all people to you. By being raised from the dead you restore to humanity all that was lost through sin. Be with us in your risen power that in word and deed we may proclaim the marvellous mystery of death and resurrection. For all praise is yours, now and throughout eternity. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When Peter saw the crowd gather after the healing of the lame man, he addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we have made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the Holy and Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord and that he may send the Messiah appointed for you, that is, Jesus. Hear the word of the Lord.
A reading from the, the first letter of John. Do not love the world or the things of the world. The love of the Father is not in those who love the world. For all that is in the world, the desire of the flesh, the desire of the eyes, the pride in riches, comes not from the Father, but from the world. And the world and its desire are passing away, but those who do the will of God live forever. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What we will be has not yet been revealed. What we do know is this. When he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure. Everyone who commits sin is guilty of lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. You know that he was revealed to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins, and no one who sins has either seen him or known him. Hear the word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus himself stood among the eleven and their companions and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see. For a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish. And he took it and ate in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. It's now two weeks since we have begun saying our great Easter cry, Christ is risen, alleluia, he is risen indeed, alleluia. But as we make that great bold statement, you may, like me, have at the back of your mind thoughts about those for whom life is particularly challenging. Even though our Easter cry is heartfelt and joyful, we though know there is more to it because we express our Easter joy while there's still suffering in the world, so much so that we may wonder, has Christ risen? Yesterday we heard the news from Sydney of an horrific and distressing event that led to six people dying and uh, the latest reports are 12 people in hospital, one of whom was a nine-month-old child. What motivates an attacker to injure a child? It's hard to fathom. And yet in our world such killing sprees are not an isolated or infrequent occurrence. So if we are truly honest with ourselves, our Easter cry, Christ is risen, must also come with questions, with doubts. Our Easter joy is tinged with fear and uncertainties. Fortunately, our Gospel writer today, Luke, knows exactly how to express this for us. 
as he tells us what it was like for the first disciples when their risen Lord appears to them. Luke tells us, yet for all their joy, they were still disbelieving and wondering. Even with Christ physically present, they're still disbelieving. And not only is this true in Luke's Gospel, it's true of all the Gospel accounts of the resurrection news. No one believes the good news of Jesus' resurrection when they first hear it. Even the disciples, when they are present with the resurrected Jesus, are filled with both joy and doubt. It is not surprising returning from the grave was not in their experience and it's not in our experience either. And even if it is not a ghost who has appeared to them, they have another doubt. Is this the same Jesus, the one who was crucified? Is this the same rabbi they knew when they walked up and down the length of Palestine? It was not just the presence of Jesus they doubted. They also doubted if it really was the same Jesus. And Jesus responds by asking them to do two things. Look and then touch and see. But having invited them to touch him, even then they are still disbelieving and still wondering. So when we make our Easter cry, Christ is risen, Alleluia, we do so with the same amazement and joy that the disciples had. But it is also okay to have those wonderings, those doubts and questions, for that is what faith is. Faith is trust, despite our lack of conclusive evidence. We are to trust in the God who has already forgiven us, who then calls us to respond in ways that give proof to that. And many commentators have noticed that in Luke's Gospel, Jesus eats his way through the Gospel. Throughout his ministry, Jesus is welcomed by tax collectors and sinners and eats with them. Jesus hosts thousands and feeds them with bread and fish. That he commands his disciples to break bread and share wine as a sign of his presence. And then Jesus is killed for eating with the wrong people. But then appears, as we heard today, eating fish, proving he has overcome the forces of hate that killed him. And this has implications for us and challenges us on how are we to live out the resurrection life? How are we to act and know that Jesus is risen. Jesus challenges his disciples to be witnesses of what they have just experienced. And what have they just witnessed? And Luke wants us to see the connection, the pattern that we recognise in the pattern of our worship today. This Eucharistic pattern is there for us. An encounter with Christ, a word from Christ, a meal with Christ and being sent out by Christ. It's the pattern of our worship, Sunday by Sunday. We come to encounter Christ here and, be, and see Christ in one another, to look and see. We come to hear Christ's word read and proclaimed, hearing Christ in the scriptures, in the words we speak, and listening to the Spirit. We break and share, break bread and share wine together around Christ's table and Christ as host. And we are then sent to witness to act as if the kingdom has come, to be reconcilers, advocates, friends, people of goodwill, joyful and sacrificial, valuing peace and forgiveness, never failing in hope, never satisfied with evil or hatred or prejudice, never arrogant or rude, ready to help and be helped, 
ready to encounter the risen Christ in everyone we meet. We encounter Christ, we hear Christ's word, we eat with Christ, and we are sent. But it can still be overwhelming knowing how to respond to the risen Christ. It's why the church sets aside 50 days in the calendar for Easter tide. It gives us time to try and make more sense of something that is just so strange, so wonderful, so full of mystery. Christ is risen. So how do we respond even though we have doubts and questions, even though we are like those first disciples, both joyful and disbelieving at the same time? Lutheran preacher David Luther, who always has a great turn of phrase, challenges us to act as if the promises of God are true and to be trusted. So he says, he asks, if it's true that God raised Jesus from the dead, if it's true that God promises to renew the whole creation and grant us new life, if it's true that nothing, nothing we've done or has been done to us, can separate us from the love of God, if it's true that God will not turn God's back on any of us, but always reaches out to us in grace, mercy and forgiveness, if any of this, let alone all of this, is true, then how might we live our lives this week differently? How might this faith, not knowledge, but trusting, courageous faith. Change how we look at our relationships and our politics and our work and our resources and our future. So we move through this Easter season aware there is grief and suffering in the world, aware of our own failings and burdens, trusting that love is stronger than death, that Christ still heals us inside and out. Like Leonard Cohen's muted Alleluia in his most famous song, or like the words of the Russian Kentuckian, weeping at the grave, we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So we cry our Easter cry, with joy and amazement, as a cry of hope in a world of so much despair, as an act of affirmation, an affirmation of faith in the God of life and love. Christ is risen, alleluia. He is risen indeed, alleluia. Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. 
who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and of the world to come. May God be glorified now as we commit ourselves to the work of prayer, interceding for those in all kinds of need. In our worship and our openness to the spirit of life, in the church's longing and outreach, in the ministers, the people, in all seekers and honest doubters, in all this, May God be glorified in the welfare programs and the peacemaking missions, in the struggles to uphold justice and in aid given to the hungry and homeless. In all this, may God be glorified. In the loving and costly commitment of mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, daughters and sons, in the determination to forgive and forgive in all the lives shared and cherished in all this may god be glorified in the work of nursing comforting and healing in the daily patient struggle with pain and weakness and in the practical good-humored caring we pray for those who have asked for our prayers. Percy, Alex, Riker, Frank, Ellen, Mark, Patricia, Beverly, Charles III, and Catherine, Princess of Wales. In all this, may God be glorified. In the twilight years and the facing of death, in lives well lived and now breaking into eternity, we give thanks for the recently departed, including Andrew Greenwood. And we remember those who years, whose years mind falls at this time. Dale Edney Brown, Ron Hobby Priest, Judith Parker, Ron Searcy, Ian McPherson, Kathleen Newman, Bill Pigeon, Elaine Hackfaith, Irene Searcy, and Peter Walsh. In all this, may God be glorified. In the freedom offered through forgiveness, in the joy of resurrection life, in the hope of eternity, in all this, may God be glorified. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of us. By his death on the cross, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. And now we give you thanks that you raised him to life triumphant and exalted him in glory. By his victory over death, the reign of sin is ended, a new day has dawned, a broken world is restored, and we are made whole once more. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who eat and drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and again giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again, we celebrate with this bread and this cup his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith.
Renew us by your Holy Spirit, unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. As our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are confident to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Amen. the gifts of God for the people of God. Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Eternal God, giver of life, in the breaking of the bread we know the risen Lord. May we who celebrate this holy feast walk in his risen light and bring new life to all creation. Most loving God, you send us into the world you love. Give us grace to go thankfully and with courage in the power of your spirit. God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you what is pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Amen.